Now that I have this frame box in back here, I went and grabbed these little cross members. I got them sitting on the frame about where they need to go. That way I can kind of get an idea of what I need to do to make them fit. I'm going to start with this rear cross member, the spare tire carrier, and then I'm going to work my way up here to this uh, fuel tank cross member. This thing is just a heap and dumpster fire. If you look at it, it's all rusted out. Um, in my previous videos when I removed it, I was really surprised how bad it was. So I'm not going to try to use this again. I'm just going to try to maybe mostly use it as a reference point and build something completely new. Um, this thing, if you can find new old stock from trailer, they're kind of expensive. And to find them in a junkyard, it's possible it's going to be just as bad or maybe worse than what I have. So one thing I do want to be mindful of is where I'm going to place these things. One, the spare tire carrier needs to be pretty close to where it's supposed to be. This thing, I want to make sure that I utilize the factory fuel tank strap if possible. That way I can buy an off-the-shelf part and get my fuel tank mounted back in how it needs to. Uh, the last thing I'm going to do back here is shock placement because they might get moved around a little bit. Uh, I've got a couple different thoughts on where I'm going to place the shocks. So once these other things are done, then I'll handle that last. Now that I got all those extra pieces off of this cross member, it's going to be a lot easier to work with. As I took this truck apart, I used my tape measure and I went around all different points on this frame and I wrote down a ton of different measurements so that if something went sideways, I could hopefully try to correct it. And also when I got to this point where I was putting pieces back on, I wanted to know where they need to be so that it'll work. Um, this one lines up with these holes. That's why I didn't fill these. These holes right here line up with these holes right here, and I made a note of that. So what I did before anything is I just quickly set my laser up so it's going straight down these holes, and then I can pick this up, because now that they're being blocked, I can't quite see them. But I can line this up as well with the laser since now everything's in line. And if I, if I need to or needed to, I can trace this line so I have a center line down this um, frame member here. And I think I'm going to do that because once I drop it down in here, it'll be a little bit easier for me just to, you know, run the um, laser down it so I can get this thing right where it needs to be. So I'm just going to, real quick, my laser's actually getting a little weak. I'm going to have to get some new batteries in it. I'm just trying to get it. Actually, I don't really need to go down the whole thing. It's really all I need to do about right here so I can line the end up. But yeah, so that's one little trick I got. Um, the other thing I did too was I flipped this over, right? Because these holes, since they line up with those holes, I'm not going to get crazy and put like a, a dowel in there or anything, but I could if I wanted to. I'm going to eyeball this hole and get that lined up. Do the same on this side, which is this off. I don't need this way under there anymore. I'll line this side up as well to that hole. And what I need to do is shorten this thing down so that it'll fit down between the frame. I've got about 36 and a half inches here. The top span that I measured was about 40. So I got about inch and three quarter. I got to pull off each side, plus maybe a little extra just so it's not a press fit. I want to be able to get this thing in and out pretty easily. So the marks that you saw in here was just me doing this. I ran my Sharpie right along inside the frame as a guide, and I made these lines. So that's what these lines are. These are my cut lines. I want to be able to cut that straight through, but I can't really, um, I don't have a chop saw or anything, so I can just do a completely straight cut. I'm gonna use my cutoff wheel. So I need to, oh, I'd like to get a, a straight line all the way down through here. So I'm going to try to use my laser for that. On both sides, I'm going to try to set this up. And then 
I'll cut each of these down and put it between the frame and kind of see how it looks. These pieces cut off nice and straight and they're exact same width just like I wanted. So they would have been just like that. A couple things to take note, these holes were the center holes that lined up with these on the frame. That's the reason that I extended these lines just a little bit so that once I cut these off I can come back and realign this. Um, another thing to look at is how they had captive nuts on the back side. So that would have bolted through the top of the frame rail into this cross member on both sides, top and bottom. See there's the bottom nuts. Um, I would like to do something similar because I want to make it removable. So get these things out of the way. So right now uh, I've just got a couple of magnets down here and a little shim just to kind of get this close to the top of the rail. Um, another little trick I was using is just to take this piece of string I had laying around my garage kind of doing the old chalk line trick here and I can span the center line of these uh, frame holes since those are how I'm lining this up and I can line that up with my, my sharpie marks and get that thing right where it needs to be. So now what I can do is make a little template so I can cut out a plate that I can weld to the top of this rail. And when I do that, I can drill two holes through it straight through the upper cross member on both sides and then I'll add some captive nuts so that I can bolt it on just like the it did from the factory. I'll do something similar on the bottom. I really want to make this thing removable for whatever reason just in case I need to get it out of here. Um, and then when I'm done welding and making any little minor um, reinforcements of this that I might do, I'll get it all cleaned up so that when all this is done I can uh, paint it and coat it and make it all look nice.
this is the finished rear cross number. I ended up shortening it, adding a top reinforcement plate just for a little extra strength. There's a bottom plate that I had to redo. I wasn't happy with the rust flaking between the layers, so I ground out all the spot welds, made new lower plates, and spot welded those in. Also added uh, the captive nuts everywhere I could, just like the factory stuff. Uh, I got new hardware everywhere I could. For now, I still obviously need to clean up the rust a bit more for when I'm going to recoat everything. The only thing I haven't done yet is replace this tire hoist. Um, this one still works fine, but it's old and I'd rather get a new one. They're not too bad. I think they're around 80 bucks from Toyota. So I'll just get a new one of those. These rear brackets, the top plate was rather simple. It's just a flat plate uh, that's welded in. So the bottom one is a little more intricate. I made a template that kind of mirrors this uh, shape. And then it's got a compound like a Z-bend down here to wrap up on the frame. And then it will line up with these holes on this angle at the bottom. So now this will slip right in here. Nice and snug. A little tricky because I saw these cross braces back here. But pull it in there. There, line up the holes. Then I can put the there, bolts in it like that. And I'll be able to put my spare tire back here. So now I can move on to getting the fuel tank mounted up and coming up with a solution for that cross member up there. Second time's a charm. I got that temporary brace out of the way. I'm really not worried about having it in here at this point since the frame's been boxed in. It's a lot sturdier. I also have the rear cross member and these other two temporaries in, so the frame's really not moving anywhere. Um, I did dig out the old rusty fuel tank cross member here. I think what I'm gonna end up doing is cutting it down a little bit just so I can kind of see where it wants to be and then maybe I can get an idea of the the contours of the tank and how the strap needs to mount and come up with a, a new cross member but before I do any of that this truck hasn't ran in months and I really want to start it up so now that the tanks in place I got the forward flange is bolted under here there's another cross member of course that's holding it Back here, I don't have this in place yet to hold the tank on a strap, so I do have a jack stand with a, a block of wood holding the tank pretty level. I'm gonna go ahead and um, uncap these lines here. I got my fuel feed and return. I wanna snap these in real quick, shouldn't take much. I just wanna see, well this engine run, I haven't ran in a while. So let's hook these up real quick. Nope. Everything was capped off trying to keep it all clean, so that's always nice. Okay, snap down. We get our fuel pump and our sensor. Okay, a couple of little connections back here. Okay. Alright, that's all hooked up been wanting to hear this thing run for a while now. Here we go. Come on, Toyota. cross member figured out. So like I said, I'm going to start by taking maybe 
a couple inches off either side, like I had to do back here with this rear cross member, so that it can nestle down in here. And that'll kind of give me an idea of um, what I'm looking at, what I'm dealing with. So I'll come up, start coming up with a new piece. I cut the fuel tank cross member down so it fits between these frame rails. And then I went back to the measurements I took before I started this whole project. And I got it sitting where it needs to. Underneath, I put a block of wood and one of my scissor jacks so I could raise it up to just the right height where that needs to be. Then I took a piece of string here to go down these frame rails. And I took a measurement from that to the top of the tank, give me a rough estimate there. Same thing here, I just figured one more measurement couldn't hurt. That's just a straight edge going across these bed mounts. And then I marked that, wrote all that down so that now I can take this old piece of junk out of here and lay out a new piece and start figuring out how I'm going to make something to go in here. started with a piece of two inch by three inch eight wall rectangular tube. I cut the length down being mindful that I wanted to put a plate in here so there's room at the end for that. The plate that I'm going to put in there not only is going to help reinforce the end of the tube but it's going to span the gap the butt joint where these frame caps are. That's gonna act as like a fish plate to cover that area. So it's gonna be a multifunctional piece. This notch was a little tricky. I ended up making uh, two templates because there are two different profiled curves that are stamped into this original one that form around the tank. So I made a template for the front and the back and then I traced those on here and did my best to cut and grind those out. They turned out really nice. I've got a little bit of a gap in here yet because I want to take another piece of plate and I want to form it so that it fits inside of that notch to give some extra support where it touches this fuel tank insulator piece. And then that also close off this tube again. Now, one other thing I have to do is get this fuel tank strap to mount up. The original one, being a stamp part, is hollow in the middle. This just went through a pin. Done. Now I could do something like that. I could uh, notch a little hole in the bottom. This could go up inside. I could drill it and pin it and be done with it. I don't really like that because it would just, just be this hole right in the center of the tube. So as much as I don't want to modify a factory Fuel tank strap, I think I'm just going to end up doing it. I mean, how often do you have to change fuel tank straps, right? So, I'll just make a tab down lower in this area, and then it'll have a place to pin it through down here. And then it'll just be a cleaner look, and that'll be the last thing i got to do to get this in here.
This cross member with these contours in it here turned out great. It fits this tape very nice. So I'm using this more as my guide to form this filler plate. I did make the template and I cut out a piece. This is just about the same width as the original cross member. I was able to use my hydraulic press and my little DIY bender die to get these angles in here fairly close. But since they are not just hard bends, they, they sweep through this radius. Actually, I ended up doing a couple one way and a couple to match that angle. And then just kind of did a couple light taps with a mallet. It got it really close. You'll see now it fits really nice on the top of the tank. And then this will come back in here. And that'll get welded together. Now to get this even closer, because this is pretty hefty to work with, I'm going to tack it in and then clamp it as I go. And that'll kind of pull this into the shape that I want. And then that'll finish this part off. This thing came out really nice. I'm happy with this. I got it all welded in, came back and touched off those real quick with the grinder. It's just to smooth them out. I've got measurements on where this thing is sitting now, where it's happy. So I went ahead and made this fish plate template so that I can cut these out. These are my plates. To get those in there, I gotta get this out of here and the fuel tank for multiple reasons. One, I need the room. Two, I really don't want to catch it on fire. So this thing's going to get set out of the way so I can get uh, room to work. I'll get these plates welded in, and then I will fit this back in uh, based on my measurements so that I can tack it. I'll check it one more time in the tank, and then I'll weld it in, and it'll be done. I got the fuel tank in, it's not 100%, I just have a tie down strap holding it up into the frame for now because I still need to order the fuel tank strap and then I'll have to weld the tab down here and get it all done. Um, but now that it's in, I'll be able to drive it in and out of the garage instead of pushing it. I'm getting really tired of pushing this truck, so that's going to be quite the luxury for me. Uh, the next thing looking forward, as far as fab work goes, I do need to cut off and make a new bed mount for back there in that corner. I also have to mount this load sensing brake valve on the frame. And then I left the shocks for last because I want to get all these pieces laid out so I knew what kind of room I had to work with. And then I can get those welded in. Once all the fab work is done, I can do the final cleanup on this frame and start putting coatings on it. So I really want to get this done inside and out, protect it. Then I also had to make a list of all this little stuff I got to order. I got lots of little bits and pieces back here that I need to order so I can get those coming. That'll let me uh, get the back end of this truck all finished up. I'll be able to get the bed back on it and then I'll be able to drive it for real, but I'm not done yet. I still have other stuff moving forward 
the rear half was just the, the biggest concern, and now it's about handled. So I'll move forward. I got more stuff to finish. And then in the future, there's a lot of cool stuff that I want to do with this truck. Cooler stuff, anyway. Cool to me. Maybe not cool to, to everybody watching, but yeah, that's going to be coming up in the future. So just stay tuned for that, and we'll see how this all turns out.